Hi everyone. Uh, in the past, I've shown some techniques to measure lower resistances. Uh, this time, I'm going to put together a bunch of um, different techniques uh, just to complete the picture. Uh, I've also shown uh, in the past uh, me measurements using the lock-in amplifier. I did that uh, using single-ended approach. Uh, so this time, I'm going to do it differentially, and then compare that with uh, two different lock-in amplifiers. So starting from the top, uh, this is the first one is probably the least accurate way of doing it is to uh, use a handheld multimeter. Then uh, next uh, is to go to a little bit more specialized instrument like a RLC handheld meter. Uh, these are not spe particularly designed for measuring very low resistances, but I'm going to give it a shot with a four wire tap measurement. Then there's a bench top um, like six and a half and above type of uh, digits uh, meters which uh, again do four wire measurements. I have an HP 34401A which is capable of doing it. Um, then I have my own homemade milliometer which I built a couple of years ago. Then there's an analog milliometer which are specialized instruments uh, like the HP I think it's a 35 5328, I'm not sure the exact number, but there's a, I have a Keatley 502A, which is very similar, but it's a much cheaper version compared to the HP version. Um, then I have the analog lock and amplifier, the Stanford Research 530. And then finally, I have a DSP lock and amplifier, the signal recovery 7280. The first five of them are pretty much straightforward in terms of how you measure them with uh, using a four wire technique or just a two wire technique. Uh, I'm just going to go through the handheld multimeter to show that it's not going to work at all. Uh, then as you go down the, these uh, different uh, meters or techniques, it starts to get a little bit more accurate. Uh, but uh, since I don't have a standard um, and um, the none of my instruments are calibrated, uh, it's, it's basically um, I'm not going to be able to prove that any of these is more accurate than the other, especially the last four of them. But at least we'll get an idea of uh, the range, the capability of these meters, and then I'll go into some discussion about um, the uh, sources of error, especially um, in the last four or five uh, meters which can do it, uh, or techniques that can do it. So let's uh, start off uh, with the first one and then we'll go down the list and uh, get some results and then at the end I'll conclude with uh, which um, potentially can be the best technique. So starting off with the simple multimeter uh, over here um, it's a two wire measurement as you can see I'm measuring at across the resistor here the unknown resistor we have some lead resistances R1 and R2 and uh, typically these type of multimeters, multimeters uh, don't have particularly high resolution when they go below 1 ohm or even below 10 ohms. Uh, they're going to be starting to read incorrectly. Even if you null it out, uh, the resolution is not just not sufficient uh, to measure anything in the milliohm region. Uh, the particular, this particular measurement I'm going to do is a 15 milliohm wire, which uh, is kind of a region where most people, at least do, do it yourself, would be trying to measure resistances in that. Um, realm which is the maybe 100 milliohm down to 10 milliohms type of region where you want to uh, measure some wires or some traces on a PCB and those type of resistances fall into this area. I'm not going to be able to measure shunt, um, you know, large shunt resistances which t typically tend to be uh, less than 1 milliohm. Uh, for that you would need a micro ohm meter. I do feel that um, the lock-in amplifier might be able to get there but uh, there are other problems with um, measuring uh, sub milliohm measurements with respect to the metal interfaces and so on that occur, uh, contacts and stuff like that. Anyhow, um, this is the first technique is to use a two wire measurement and next is to go to a four wire measurement. All right, so this is a four wire measurement. Um, again, we have the same R unknown over here. Uh, and this time we have four leads coming out of the meter and this is a typical configuration uh, like an um, HP benchtop meter or even a specialized instrument that does it, uh, an RLC meter which may have the same type of uh, leads. 
So here we have um, the one, the two current input and outputs which force the current into the resistor and uh, basically the resistance on that lead is completely irrelevant because uh, the so current uh, basically flows through the single wire and there's no other way it can go. Uh, we also assume that the impedance of the volt, voltage side of the voltmeter is very high, at least 1 megaohm to 10 megaohms. In some meters it's even higher than that. But let's assume it's just a typical meter. Um, it will be in this neighborhood, uh, 10 megaohms for the better ones. Uh, so in this case, there's no current flowing into the voltage terminal. So all the current that flows must flow through the resistor and come. So what we really measure is the unknown voltage across the unknown, pretty much uh, depending on the accuracy of the voltmeter in this meter, in this particular instrument, you get a fairly good reading. Uh, the only thing that one has to uh, determine is what the resolution of this meter is in terms of the voltage. That will determine how low that um, the resistance it can measure as well as accuracy of the current that flows through this particular setup. So the R unknown is really V plus which is actually the voltage that is impressed upon here um, and which is the same as the voltage that is over here because there is no current in this resistor. So we have V plus minus V minus which is over here divided by the current which, which the meter can um, assume it's well calibrated it has a, probably a good uh, reading for that. So, so this, this is a fairly simple measurement. Uh, if you have four leads you can do this on any meter. So the only uh, source of error of course is when you get into very very low resistances you have the problem with metal junctions, uh, metal interfaces develop some small voltages and if they are in the microvolts to tens of microvolts to hundreds of microvolts that adds to the inaccuracy in a milliohm type of measurement. So this meter, this type of technique is very common and it works very well for most resistances down to a few milliohms or so. So this is the last technique I'm going to talk about. Um, I did talk about this in a previous video but this time uh, this is going to be a differential type measurement and uh, it looks a bit complicated but let me go through this. So what we have uh, is a uh, lock and amplifier over here which has two inputs, the A input and B input typically. Sometimes they have a current input as well or the B, in could, e, the B input could also double as a current input. Um, usually it's, this is a negative input so it automatically uh, will reverse the signal um, polarity but it could be switchable in many uh, of these lock-ins. So anyway, so you have two inputs, A minus B, and then uh, you have the reference input where you can apply a clock uh, or a AC source. It can be a square wave or it could be a sine wave. Let's assume for now it's a sine wave and uh, it has a certain amplitude at least, um, let's say about half a volt to one volt RMS. So the reference input uh, is able to lock to this particular uh, AC source in frequency. And so this reference input is then used within the lock-in to do all the processing. So the same um, signal is then applied to a lead, of course, into this R big resistor, which then is connected in series with an R unknown. So the only few assumptions we need to make is that this lead resistance is quite small. Typically, we are of 0.1 ohms to maybe less than an ohm, roughly. Whereas R big is going to be quite large, uh, typically in the 1 to 2 kilo ohm range. So essentially you can ignore R1 with respect to R big. Similarly, we assume that R unknown is much smaller than R big. Uh, if you're talking about measuring 15 milliohms, 100 milliohms, uh, 10 milliohms or 5 milliohms, this 1 point something kilo ohms or 2 kilo ohms is going to dwarf uh, this particular resistor. So essentially um, this, uh, this uh, relationship does hold true which simplifies some of the calculations. Finally, the return path for the, the AC source is going to be through this ground over here uh, to another lead resistance which is going to be small. But since we are doing a differential measurement A minus B takes care of any uh, ground related uh, losses which can add inaccuracy which is what my previous measurement probably had was this I wasn't taking into account R2 because I was doing a singular measure, measurement right at, uh, at this point without and B being assuming it grounded essentially. So um, what happens is we have a AC frequency of several, let's say several hundred hertz to a few kilohertz which is probably the right frequency to use 
without uh, getting into inductance issues and stuff like that. So if you use something in that neighborhood, then all these resistances behave like pure resistances and don't have inductances in them. And uh, essentially, just simplifying the mathematics related to the voltages here, you get VA, which is over here, VA minus VB over VN, which is going to be, which is measured, which can be measured, and times R big over VN is going to be the final R unknown. Again, R big can be easily measured in the 1 to 2 kilo ohm range or even a little bit larger. It's easy to measure that accurately with a standard meter and it doesn't have to be extremely accurate because this is a very, very large value compared to this one. So it, any effect of this one is basically dwarfed by this guy. So R unknown is then VA minus VB over VN times R big. So that's the simplified formula which you can use to calculate the final uh, unknown resistance over here. So let's next um, get into some of these measurements one by one and we will then tabulate the results and see what, they sh what the range in values look like and then which one you would tend to believe. So here's the setup, a fairly simple uh, setup, uh, just a piece of wire over here which about um, 20 centimeters long I would say and the resistance is in the order of 10 to 20 milliohms in that neighborhood. And I basically anchored it with this nail on both sides and there's a so X for the lock-in I have a small resistor over here which is around I think 1.5 kilo ohms and that is a good size to keep the to not load the generator too much as, as well as to provide a sufficient amount of current here uh, which will be noise free hopefully and uh, the frequency will be will be such that it's not going to be inter interfered with by environmental frequencies 60 hertz 120 hertz and so on which would of course cause problems but the lock-in is extremely selective so for that particular frequency in that range we should have no problem for the regular uh, four wire measurement i will apply a current on either end here and then measure right at the right at the edge of this particular nail on both sides so hopefully i get the roughly the same point for the for the as far as the voltage is concerned for both sides as well as for the simple measurements right at the edge of this nail. So that's the setup. Um, next, first thing I'm going to do is to uh, measure with the simple multimeter and see what we get and then proceed on down the chain for the different instruments. So this is the multimeter, it's a Tektronix TX3, it's a very good multimeter. I've had it for a long time and it's uh, accurate uh, in both voltage and on the current scales but um, Right now, I'm shorting out the two leads and I'm getting 0.43 or 0.5 ohms roughly. So I'm going to null it out um, and then do a measurement and see what I get. It's not going to be good, I know that, but let's see how, how well we can do. It's got a 10, um, 0.01 ohm or 10 milliohm type resolution, which is not good for this particular thing, but it's got more problems than that, I'm sure. So let's look at this. So it's reading 0 0.02, 0 0.01, 0 0.02. Uh, it's really not um, doing, it's not able to really measure anything accurately or consistently. So even with the nulling, it's not going to be particularly good. And the null value is as big as the, probably the actual measurement I'm trying to make over here. So it's all over the place. And really, I can't trust this instrument for measuring any anything in the milliohm type of region so the next one is this uh, dr lcr meter the de 5000 and you can see it's a four wire measurement it's got this kelvin leads um, and it's reading 19 milliohms which uh, i think is not too bad in the sense that the value is around that value so i'm quite uh, Surprised it actually managed to get that value. So it's it's, it's definitely usable, uh, probably in the 50 milliohm and above range. But uh, it's going to have some inaccuracies uh, because it's not really meant for such low re resistances, not a milliohm meter. So that's the limitation of this one. It's it's uh, it's really not really meant for milliohm measurements.
The next measurement is this uh, four wire measurement using a benchtop uh, HP 34401A and you can see the four leads here. I don't uh, I decided not to use the Kelvin uh, cl clip clip which uh, seems to be a little bit problematic with this one but so you can as well do a different type of uh, use just use four leads like as shown here separate leads and here the green is going to be the current negative the blue is the current positive and then you have um, the plus being the sense uh, voltage sense and then the black being the voltage negative sense so on the meter itself uh, you can see that's hooked up right there and um, it's got a value right now of uh, 15.4 milliohms, uh, which seems to be a reasonable uh, number. I think I'm using the slow uh, measurement uh, with six six digits, so it's giving a reasonably stable value between 15.5 to 15.7 milliohms. Um, and then we shall now use this number and then compare with some of the other measurements uh, with the more supposedly more accurate uh, meters or techniques that we may have available to us. Alright, so we have looked at uh, the simple instruments so far, the multimeter directly measuring the two, ohm, two wire measurement, the DER, LCR meter, handheld meter, and now I'm looking at my homemade um, milliometer which is uh, the one at the back over there and uh, you connected the Kelvin clamps to both ends as uh, before and the meter reading is uh, is about 16.5 16.3 it's varying a little bit uh, the offset cancellation uh, will do some uh, variation but it's uh, in the order of 16 to 16 and a half milli milli ohms as far as the measurement is concerned so uh, that's one of the readings we can now use to compare with the other measurements so so that's that let's now uh, look at some more instruments the so we have alternative uh, DIY milliometers that have been demonstrated on the web and also on YouTube so I would be remiss not to mention those and those are actually simpler than the, than the one I built and um, it's using a simple uh, circuit with a calibrated current source and a standard multimeter with a decent um, voltmeter would probably serve the purpose pretty good and one could get uh, fairly good results in the milliohm range with this technique. Um, basically you would need to have a, a voltage reference and a tunable resistor which set the current uh, to 100 milliamps or something in that neighborhood and then you use that calibrated current to force it to a resistor and measure the voltage across it. So that gives you a decent value. Uh, you can zero the, out the value of the voltage or the milliohm reading. Uh, there'll be some conversion necessary if sometimes because of the scaling factor but in general these techniques do work quite well. So the one I built was a little bit more complicated using self-calibration techniques using an offset calibrated um, uh, amplifier, uh, but it, it's also fairly accurate down to uh, several milliohm type of range absolute. So the next uh, instrument is the analog milliohm meter. It's a specialized instrument. Uh, it can go down from one milliohm full scale all the way up to 1K. So this is uh, definitely dealing with low resistances and uh, right now I set it at the 30 uh, milliohm range where it's going to be most uh, have the best um, output I think because we know the value of the resistor is in the order of 15 to 20 milliohms. So we'll uh, try that out on this particular range. So we have the two separate leads one is for the current and one for the voltage over here and uh, I will connect them up at the resistor and then show the results. Okay, so here you can see the four leads have been connected. The outer ones are the currents and the inner ones right at the nail, uh, edge of the nail are the voltage sensing uh, leads. And now we go back to the meter and uh, so this particular meter you have got to uh, turn on the operate mode here. And you can see it's reading 15.5, 15.5 milliohms right there 
Uh, of course, I'm not sure about the calibration here, but um, I did do a local calibration for the internal voltage, but I don't know about the currents itself and uh, any other inaccuracies. This is a very old instrument, so there are potential sources of error over here, but it's uh, giving a fairly good reading, uh, which is close to the one that uh, HP gave. So for this next setup for the lock-in, uh, I'm using one of the lock-ins as a source for the, uh, as far as the AC source is concerned, I'm using the signal recovery 7280 which has a built-in uh, function generator or a source um, oscillator. So in this case I'm using 1 kilohertz. As you can see on the blue meter, the Tektronics, it's uh, exactly uh, 1 kilohertz and it's uh, reading 999.8 millivolts which is very close to the 1 volt I put in RMS so this voltage will then go into uh, the resistor which is right over here as you can, if you can see that uh, the resistor will get the input and then it will be uh, the two leads the over here you can see the red leads go into the the first measurement is on the analog uh, SR530, you can see the inputs right here, the A and B inputs, and then I'm going to look at the digital output on that, which is this R measurement. Uh, we assume there's very little uh, inductance, so we don't have to worry about too much about the X and Y, so we just look at the R right there, and uh, hopefully that. So once we do that, I will then switch the inputs to the main, uh, to the SR. 7280 inputs over here, the A and B inputs, and then we look at its output uh, on the on its display. So right now, let me set up the SR530, make sure it's connected properly. So I'm going to disconnect the meter and apply the input directly to the uh, resistor. So connecting the resistor positive um, and the negative lead to the bottom of the unknown resistor and as you can see it's uh, overloaded here so let's look at uh, all right so it's lead reading um, decreasing now it's down to the 20 microvolt scale and I can see it's locked at 998 Hertz as far as this um, meter is concerned lock-in is concerned it's let me show you the full display here um, so it's reading 998 Hertz and this is reading 9.9 .9 microvolts or so. Uh, I've got a three second uh, time constant for the for the input side um, and now turn on all the filters there. The phase is not relevant here as I mentioned. So I think this reading is probably what I'm going to use about 9.9 .9 to 10 microvolts. Uh, go back and calculate everything. So we have a 1 volt signal here with a 1.489 kilo ohm resistor in series for the R big. So we can then do the calculation for that. So next is to look at the signal recovery. Uh, let me connect the inputs there. It's getting the same source. We are applying the same source, 1 kilohertz. Uh, this is the signal recovery now I connected the inputs as you can see on the left side the A and B I'm getting the same um, clock uh, going into the or the signal uh, going into the resistor below over here and then um, the clock output is irre irrelevant for this one because it's internally locks to the 1 kilohertz as you can see the frequency on the reference display is 1 kilohertz over there and the voltage right now is reading 12.3 microvolts. 
So it's a quite a bit different from the other one which was reading around 10 microvolts. So you have to do the calculation to see which which one is makes sense. But right now without any calibration information on these various uh, meters or this resistor being an unknown, we just have to say which one is um, looks reasonable based on the all the other measurements we have done so far. Uh, so uh, so that's the final measurement I wanted to show you and now we shall now uh, look at the results of all the different values we calculated or measured. So here are the results. So the first one uh, we did was the handheld multimeter, the Tektronix TX3. Uh, I got no result because I felt that the uh, values were all over the place and it didn't have the sufficient re resolution to resolve uh, the 15 to 20 milliohms type of resistance. The second was the handheld RLC meter, the DE5000, which gave a reasonably close value, I think uh, 19 milliohms. And uh, I think for a four wire measurement with a simple meter, I think it was a pretty good job. Uh, the Benchtop HP 34401A multimeter um, gave a value of 15.7 milliohm. I think that's probably a reasonable number. Uh, not sure of the calibration, but uh, with a four wire measurement, that's what I got. Then my homemade multimeter, um, sorry, milliometer uh, gave a value of 16.5 milliohms, which seems uh, reasonable, I think. And then the analog uh, milliometer, the Keithley 502A, also gave a value in the same area, 15.5 milliohms. Then we have the two lock-in amplifier results. The first one is the Stanford Research SR530. Uh, it gave a value of 10 microvolts uh, at a one volt input going into the large resistor, which is then uh, uh, basically a resistor divider actually. So multiplying that out by the 1.5, roughly 1.5 kilo ohm, uh, and times a correction factor, which I had to apply because of the fact that I noticed that the receiver on the on the Sanford research had an error of about 10% or so. So I corrected that and I got a value of 16.8 milliohms. As far as the DSP lock-in amplifier, um, it gave an output of 12.3 microvolts, which resulted in a uh, uh, resistance of 18.3 milliohms. So it seems like this one is a little bit higher than the rest, but overall, all the values are in the 15 to 18 milliohm, which seems to be uh, the reasonable value, I think, uh, given that I don't have any accurate way of determining the exact value uh, at the moment. So um, I think this was a fairly good exercise in uh, getting uh, different types of measurements to pretty much agree mm, to the first order. To conclude, uh, this video covered several techniques that may be used to measure low value resistances. And depending on the budget and equipment availability, it's possible to make decent measurements in the low milliohm ranges, resistance ranges, if sufficient care is taken. Um, for sub milliohm measurements, which was not attempted in this video, a more careful approach is needed to get rid uh, of thermal effects, uh, contact effects, contamination, and the consistency of the probe connections. And those make a, can make a pretty huge difference when you're talking about a milliohms or less. So uh, I think um, this was a fairly straightforward in terms of the connection itself because the wire was easily accessible and the position that I could measure the two resistances uh, points were well defined. Now a calibrated standard resistance would really be needed to determine the absolute accuracy of uh, a milliometer or any kind of technique that we have utilized so far. Uh, I don't have a commercially um, calibrated standard and those tend to be expensive, can be expensive. It's possible to probably build something but from first principles using uh, sheet resistances or metal resistances. But again, there are variabilities in the order of 5 to 10 percent which uh, basically comes down to the same type of results we are seeing over here. So I hope uh, this video was useful and uh, uh, makes you think about uh, this these type of measurements and hope to see you next time.